Are you ready? Oh yeah! Strap yourselves in for the Gaming Hub. With your host, Tyler. You can't handle the truth. Graham. The force is strong. And Steven. You cannot be serious! Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to the Gaming Hub. This is episode number 142. I'm your host, Tyler Singh. Thank you so much for joining us, and I'm joined as always by our two co-hosts. Let's start with Graham. How are you this week? I am quite well this week. Uh, you know, just staying, trying to stay warm. We're having a bit of a cold weather here, so staying in and playing some games. And those games, sticking with the cold theme, uh, NHL 19. I've been hitting the ice uh, a little more regularly than usual. We've played... Uh, I don't know if we played this week, but we've been playing some EASHL. That game is always fun. And sticking with the theme, after that, when I like to warm up, I uh, start playing some Overcooked 2. Uh, I've been playing some uh, DLC where you're hanging out on the beach, you know, a little warm, getting a little sun. And then to test my knowledge, make sure I didn't forget everything while I'm playing these games, I've been playing some Trivial Pursuit uh, with some friends. And uh, that game is a lot of fun. You can get some games out pretty quick and uh, learn a few interesting facts. And then forget those interesting facts. So, how are you guys doing? I'm good, but let's say, say hi to Steven. Steven, you also played Trivial Pursuit, uh, correct? And I think you did play with Graham. I did, and he beat me twice. Um, <laughs> the the son of a son of a gun. Um, to be fair, uh, I was a little, you know, not so in the right state of mind. Um, but you know, no excuses. Graham did beat me. Uh, it, it always came down to the final, like we were pretty close going into the final rounds and yes. uh, the questions were just not in my wheelhouse and, or Graham's just a better guesser than I am. <laughs> I don't know if he knew him, but he did or beat that. me twice. <laughs> um, and so I'll, I won't hear the end of it. Uh, of course from Tyler, Graham, Graham hasn't really ever brought it up. And as you can see, it wasn't Graham that mentioned it. It was Tyler. Uh, other than that stupid game that, you know, it's a dumb game for, for dumb people. Uh, stupid game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I've been playing, who, what have I been playing? I played some FIFA. Um, I started a new franchise in FIFA 19. Finally, I, I was playing the, like a franchise in FIFA 17 for like two years. I think I got like three or four seasons deep. I'd play every single game. Um, and I, it was just kind of my fun game, like my chill, like when I'm bored on a Saturday while watching some TV or something, I'd throw it on, uh, or while watching actual like soccer. Uh, so I started a new one finally. And so I've been playing a little bit of that. And I also started as it, any of you guys who've stopped by might've seen, uh, I, I've been playing some kingdom hearts two on the, uh, on the channel to stream that before trying to get through as many of the games as I can before kingdom hearts three comes comes around but i'm going to tell you right now like i don't know how long or how far into the series i'm going to get before i before i drop them all for kingdom hearts 3 i'm not waiting uh that game will be played the moment it comes live uh i (laughs) i probably not taking time off work for that but you never know um (laughs) but that's you might you might get sick you know (laughs) yeah i might come down with the with the flu Um, cough cough uh, i think it's already started no uh so i don't know that's but that's been basically what i've been doing I, I went back to work this week after having two weeks off and let me tell you that can be exhausting when you when you're used to not doing anything having to go back to work but my week's been pretty good tyler how about yours um not too bad and uh i can't say a lot of i got i got a lot of gaming in i didn't but i did uh i played some trailer pursuit as well games like that are just really fun to sort of you know like i said on past shows like change of pace type games um, when you're tired of like shooting and stuff, so uh, that was fun. Also uh, played some Madden and uh, continuing on in Ultimate Team there. And also we have our franchise. Our franchise is in the divisional playoff round this week. So good luck to everybody who still has games to play. I know uh, at least a couple of the games have been finished already, so we're uh, advancing through the playoffs there. And we are going to be doing a second season. So if anybody wants to join that, I uh, head on over to facebook or discord and we'll tell you how to do that here in a second but we'll have a form to fill out to uh, join in and we're gonna try to wait until right around after the super bowl to see if uh if ea does what they normally do and drops it into the vault so more people can get their hands on it and play it so but anyway we we're working through that and i have my divisional playoff game going uh i'm, I'm gonna have to do that probably tomorrow So against the Patriots and see if I can get to the AFC championship game. So we'll see. But, uh, but yeah, that's been my week. 
Yeah, and just a reminder, everybody, we are the official podcast of the Xbox Hub. Head on over to the xboxhub.com for all the latest and greatest in Xbox news reviews and everything else in between in the world of Xbox. Um, also, if you would like to join our community, and we'd love to have you, head on over to Twitch. It's the easiest way to do it. Twitch at TXH Gaming Hub. You can head on over there. There's links to everything. Facebook, Discord, Twitter, YouTube, even our email. Uh, and our, our Facebook is the Gaming Hub Forums. You can also just ask, and we'll give you links to anything else you want. Uh, those are probably the two easiest. Uh, we have a Twitter, TXH Gaming Hub. And then, but we'd love to have you come join our, our community, of course. We have a lot of great conversation. Um, everything from all the world of games, you know, Xbox, Switch, PlayStation, computer, to movies and TV, books, music, and food. Uh, we love talking about food in Discord. And if you guys like talking about food, it's a great place to come check out. Um, we also have an email, the Gaming Hub Podcast at gmail.com, where you can send in your your uh, complaints or questions or just, you know, a friendly, hey, like, love the show. Whatever you guys want, we love hearing from you. Uh, and then also we have a YouTube, the Gaming Hub podcast. You can see my new video, which was a the hottest or the uh, a hotter version of the the beef jerky than the, the previous one. So if you want to see it there, that's that. All right. And Twitter, right? Yeah, Twitter. Yeah. I, I mentioned that. <laughs> oh, did Gaming you? Hub. Sorry, yes. uh, my bad. So, uh, and if you'd like to help support the show, there are a few different ways to do that. We'd love if you decide to help support us. So, uh, first, right on Twitch, like Steven said, uh, TXH Gaming Hub on Twitch. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you get a free Twitch Prime sub to use every single month. And if you choose to spend that on us, we'd uh, really appreciate that. And uh, we use all that to provide uh, better giveaways for our community, stuff like that, and uh, help build the show, make it better quality, provide more content, things like that. In the future, last week we talked about some of our goals for the year. E3 2019 is one of those. And uh, for us to be able to get there, you know, we need your help with that. So uh, Twitch is one way to do that with a, a sub or a Twitch Prime sub. The other way is we have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash gaming hub. For as little as $2 a month, you get uh, bonus content. Like you got to see Steven's Be Tricky episode early. Uh, we have bonus episodes that we put out. We do some mailbag episodes, stuff like that. And for as little as five dollars a month, you are entered into a monthly giveaway just for patrons at the five dollar and up levels for sixty dollars in gift cards to the console of your choice to spend on whatever you'd like from that system. So uh, those are the ways that you can help support us. And like I said, uh, we really, really appreciate it if you do that. Graham? Yes. And everyone knows, but there are a lot of platforms and a lot of ways to listen to the podcast. And if you're not happy with your current choice, there's a couple new ones here that you can choose from. You can listen to us using the Radio Public app. Now, this app can be obtained for free using your app store. And another way you can listen to our podcast is using an app called Dash Radio. You just download the app and look for us on their multiplayer channel where you can find our podcasts among other uh, gaming podcasts streaming. And if you like what you hear, hopefully you do, on any of these platforms, it really helps us and is very much appreciated if you could write a quick review, long review, don't matter, some kind of review, and give us a five-star rating if you really enjoy this content and uh, spread the spread the joy to others and uh, get them to leave a nice comment and give us a five-star rating. And let's spread this to, let's make this community bigger and uh, appreciate all your help, everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Graham, the really cool thing about Radio Public is that Anytime somebody listens to our show there, all they have to do is hit play and listen. Um, we actually get uh, some monetary kickback from them for that, for every play on every episode that, that's played. So that's another way to help support us as well. So Graham talked about reviews, and like he said, those are really appreciated. We, we love them. We, want to help, we wanted to start sharing some of the reviews that we get. People like, oh, give us five stars and give a review, just so you know that we do see them. We read all of it. So we had a, <clears throat> excuse me, we had a few this week and I wanted to share them. Uh, Void Exo, I think is how we say it, uh, wrote on iTunes, honestly, an amazing podcast. All the hosts give very uh, informative information and have uh, very unique views as well. While I personally do not play most of the games that are talked about, uh, he says he sticks to Call of Duty or Rocket League when playing on console. It's still great to hear everything happening in the console world. Definitely worth checking out. So thank you for that. Um, Dead the Lemon, I think, uh, says also on iTunes, I work overnights and I love being able to listen to something good. 
every week is a bit different and always really entertaining. I really uh, like how they kind of cover everything and uh, they're able to be caught up with game news and releases. Overall, an amazing listen. I would recommend this to anyone who enjoys video games and podcasts. So again, thank you for that. And finally, Scott N on CastBox uh, left us a comment. Just found you guys and was hooked immediately. The first thing I did was go to Twitch and subscribe to your channel using my Amazon Prime. So, uh, Scott, that's awesome. Thank you so much for that. Yes, thank really, you. Really, really appreciate that. And uh, like I said, just leaving those reviews and rating us five stars helps us a ton. It helps us grow. And people go and they look at reviews and they see, you know, the good stuff there. And they're like, hey, I want to give these guys uh, a shot. So, really appreciate that. All right. Let's head into news, guys. And there is news, the news this week. And including some really big news that dropped just hours ago, as we're recording on a Thursday. So, Activision and Bungie are ending their relationship that started back in 2010. Bungie is retaining rights to the Destiny series going, Destiny franchise going forward. Steven, I'll go to you first. Um, Graham's not quite as big into Destiny as either of us. <laughs> that, that That's a safe assumption. <laughs> But, like, your thoughts on this, just as far, we'll start with, like, what does this mean for Destiny going forward? What do you think there? I, I'm i excited, actually. I think Activision may have put some, uh, what's, I guess, deadlines that kind of made Bungie make some questionable, silly decisions in a way, especially with Destiny 2. Because I thought, after like, Destiny 1 was, was fun, but kind of got stale a little quickly, um, especially in the end game content. Like it was like, you'd get on, you'd do the nightfall and the raid, and then you'd be done for the week. And then they kind of fixed it and they got a lot of people back. I unfortunately was not one cause I just didn't have people to play with, but with the, uh, the taken King. Um, but then they seem to make the same mistakes when destiny two came out. Right. And they've kind of fixed it a little bit with the, the new, the forsaken expansion, right? Is that right? Um, yeah. So, I think this will help them actually avoid the mistakes for the next Destiny game. I just, I don't know. I don't think Destiny 3 will come out now. Uh, it, it wouldn't be slated for next. It would be slated for the year after if I, if my math is correct, which I think it is. Um, so I, I, I think it'll be even pushed back farther. And I think it'll help them, maybe not necessarily a full year, but I think it'll be pushed back enough to where they can, they just don't feel stressed to get the game out right at a certain time and it's gonna it, it should help them uh you know avoid some issues uh, i'm also yeah. just excited to see what they do as a whole um with with their their own ip and they don't really have because i think now they're going to self-publish it um at least that's what it seems like they might yeah. find a new publisher but i doubt it yeah so i'm hoping they self-publish i i'm excited now going forward i think mm -hmm. this is good things for bungie um, and Destiny as a whole. And, you know, maybe it's a ruse to get us to play Destiny 3 after being like, well, we don't think we're going to buy it, you know, day one. Now we're going to buy it day one, and it could be the, you know, deja vu all over again. Again. I, I um, actually wouldn't... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised at all to see this... to see Destiny 3 get pushed back into the fall of 2021 now, rather than 20. So you it's think... Just, yeah, so, so a full year? A full year. And I think, yeah. you know, there's a couple things at play there. So one, you know, Destiny 2 came out, everybody's really excited for it, but it took steps back from where the original Destiny was at the at the end with the expansions and all that type of thing. And the fans sort of reacted to that. And they've kind of built Destiny 2 back up. It's a better game today than it was, you know, I, w I wouldn't say at launch, but like two months into launch, you know. Kind of when there was like nothing really to do anymore. It's a better game today than it was then. Yes. I see them wanting to avoid that again and taking the extra time to make sure the content is there and that it's compelling and that it's what their players want. I think uh, the other reason before I get into the other point I was going to make is, <clears throat> excuse me, the public or um, publishers have a very different uh, set of goals and set of standards than developers do. Developers want to make a great game. Publishers want to make great amounts of money. Yes, and that's uh, that, you know those two things are pulling at each other, and, and and these two have had a really contentious relationship going back to the beginning. 
you know, that's been documented. Um, Jason Trier once wrote a fantastic article about sort of the development hell that the original Destiny went through and sort of the tug of war that took place between Bungie and Activision. And that actually led to that uh, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels book that we talk about all the time. So I think it's going to give them the freedom to make the game that they want to make. And then it's also going to allow them to take full advantage of next-gen tech with both new consoles being out in the market for almost a year. And really take advantage of that, even though I'm sure there's dev kits out there already. Yeah. I, but but it, allows I, them, I, it allows them a little extra time to really take advantage of it and, and get a great game out. Um, I, I think I'd prefer, and I think it'd be better if they went with my idea, which was like, and not a full year, just like half a year. And they kind of put it out right before the summer starts maybe a little bit before so it's kind of what people play all summer because it's that's kind of the lull you know there's there's nothing really that comes out in the summer so you get people to play all summer and then you release a your first dlc that that winter maybe even an expansion though that might be asking a bit much um but a big dlc that adds a decent amount of story stuff uh and to to kick you through the 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 year i think that might be the smarter play, but I think yours is probably more realistic because they love, um, they they love doing the fall releases. Though without well, you know, act, that might have been so. An who loved the thing, fall release so. though? Yeah, Bungie that's or right. Activision? Yeah, you know that's, that's and the, I, it's probably Activision because yeah, isn't that fall release like right at quarter quarter four where they well it depends on what, depends on how their fiscal year falls, but it's that that fall window is the most important time of their fiscal year. And they're trying to deliver for their shareholders. So, and I, and I don't know off the top of my head. So, apologies. I don't know where uh, Activision's fiscal year begins and ends. So, I'm not sure exactly which quarter. I would guess it's in Q3. But, still, they, uh, they want to deliver for shareholders. And they want those games out in that window. Because that's what, when all eyes are on it. So, Graham, I want to ask you this question. Sure. Now that Bungie is sort of free, you know, we think, to make the game they want to make, at least the the Activision reason slash excuse is gone. Are you at least willing to, are you more willing to buy Destiny 3 at this point and kind of see what their actual vision for the game is? Okay, so Division, or Division, Destiny 1, I've never played. I don't know anything about it. And out of like, I compare it to like music albums. A lot of their first albums is their best one because they've had so much time working on it and not pressures like, okay, you got to release something at this certain date. But like, I don't know what their overall like goal is or what their vision is, what they would obtain if they didn't have these restrictions. So as of right now, Destiny just puts a bitter taste in my mouth and. I'm not going to say I'm like looking forward to what they'll change in Destiny 3, but I'll just keep my eyes out and see what they say. But nothing's like, oh, I hope Destiny 3 is better so I can play it. I just There's nothing drawing me in to play Destiny. All right, fair enough. Um, you know, Steven, same question to you. Uh, do, you do you think this will result in a better game out of the gate? Yes. Uh, abs- well, it should. Um, will it is, you know, remains to be seen, but I, mm-hmm. I do think it, it will be telling if, if the game doesn't come out fall of 2020. Okay. I agree. So, and then, yeah, it, yeah go ahead. No, no, I was, that's, uh, okay. That's so the last thing I wanted to say is, or ask is who do you think initiated this and who initiated it and who do you think is more happy about it? I personally, I think this was an Activision thing. I think Activision was like, all right, enough. Destiny 2 didn't perform the way that they wanted it to, thought it would. They didn't get the ROI on it that they were looking for. And I think they just said, all right, you know, this has been nothing but a problem for kind of both of us. Do you just kind of want to go your own way? So... It, but on the flip side, I, I would absolutely say I think Bungie's probably the happier party in this. What do you think? Yeah, I'm I'm 100% in agreement. It was probably Activision-led. I just I can't imagine if Activision didn't want this, that happening, you know? Because um, 
they were the publisher and they're making they were making probably decent money on it but you're right they, the return of investment was may not have been as big as we all kind of kind of thought so it probably Act, activision definitely was the lead but i think it, it might have been a mutual like we're both in agreement um and i i do think that bungie will be the happier party here uh going forward and well just right now too yeah yeah graham any any thoughts on that yeah, like when that freedom is lifted, like it's a sense of relief and uh, the pressure isn't there. So I would say, yeah, the Bungie camp is definitely happy with this. And yeah. I'm, I'm sure they're excited to get in um, working on Destiny 3. Like I know now they don't have the publisher to back them, but this is a pretty strong name. So if they're looking for other publishers, if they don't go the self-publishing route, which they probably will, uh, I think they'll be they'll be fine. Mm-hmm. And I, I have a question for you both sure. now. Um, I saw it as a joke today, but, I mean, you never know. So the, it, it was just a picture, and it was Microsoft Studios ne- right next to Bungie. Like, it was just a black screen, and it was just their two logos. So I personally think there is, like, a less than, like, 1% chance that <laughs> uh, Microsoft ends up acquiring Bungie the way they've been kind of acquiring some other studios. But you never know. It all really depends on how successful Bungie is in the next few years. Um, and Microsoft, I'm sure, would be interested in picking them back up. Uh, oh, you don't want sure. Sony to buy it. No. So <laughs> you, ne- you never know. But, yeah, I, I, I have a high doubt that that happens. I, like, literally less than one. But, you know, it, well, remember, it really just depends on money going Yeah, forward. remember Bungie had the investment from China, too, that earlier in, well, in 2018, that is going to allow them to be a multi-development studio so they can be working on two games at once. And maybe for them, this is sort of just kind of a breaking free and we can develop our own thing and kind of be like a Bethesda at this point where we kind of do both, you know, uh, develop and publish. So, and, and be sort of a behemoth in the industry that way. I, that might be it. Now, the argument I can make for why they might want to go back to Microsoft is, The culture has changed a lot around how Microsoft sort of manages its developers and its family over the last few years, over the last decade. Back when Bungie left and they split, you know, there were some bad feelings there about a lot of things. And Microsoft was pretty micromanaging in a lot of ways, and they were sort of very Activision-like here. But now that you hear these stories of Microsoft going and acquiring these new studios and saying to them, make the game you want to make. And essentially saying, like, you know, there's no limitations on you. Of course there's limitations. There's there's a limit to how much you can spend. But, like, they're not imposing that from the very beginning. And I feel like the, the culture has changed a lot, and that might take them that direction. I, I would go a little higher than Steven there, it's, but still not good. I would say, like, 10%. But I, I think Bungie's going to try to go on their own here and try to build up a studio that, you know, has the cloud of, like I said, a Bethesda. Yeah. Yeah. It it won't happen for like a year at the very earliest, more than likely. Yeah. But it really just depends how well Bungie does. Yep. Absolutely. So, and, and some of the struggles that Bungie discovers and finds themselves in without a publisher as they go forward, you know, they might discover that some things are a little harder than they thought, you know, You, you don't know and they might not. So, But hopefully this makes for a better product for players because that's really what matters at the end of the day and it's what's going to make them more money at the end of the day. So, all right. Now onto a story that uh, console gamers everywhere are thrilled about. Just kidding. They're not. (laughs) Alien Blackout, the successor to the popular Alien Isolation, is being released on January 24th. That's great news, guys. Yes, yes, that is great news. It's only available on mobile devices, though. How <laughs> what? And it's just going to be a mobile game. Uh, people are not pleased about this, and I don't blame them. So, Graham, did you play Isolation at all? You know, I didn't. I bought it uh, not that long ago. It was on sale, and I'm like, you know, I'm going to try this, which I haven't yet. I still plan on it, but... I know people were excited for that game. Well, they really enjoyed that game and they were just excited for like a sequel or what was next. But this 
this caught me off guard and I'm sure it caught many people off guard and it's tough. Like they see the potential of how much money they can make with mobile. And I guess they just don't care about angering their, the fans or the diehard fans because I'm, I don't know why you would do this. Like, why can't you try to satisfy both parties? Don't make it just strictly mobile game. Like, Give the gamers their console game as well. Because I, I don't know the sales numbers, but I'm pretty sure Alien Isolation was pretty successful. So yeah. I don't know why they would say, oh, that worked out beautifully. Let's let's just scrap all that and let's so, just try something else. Why not? <laughs> so, Graham, I have so. an answer for that, but I want to let Steven go first. Well, I mean, my, my, my question to the community is, do you guys not have phones? Um, yeah, I just... <laughs> no, I... I I feel bad that pe- like for people that would want this on the consoles. Um, I just don't know how good this could possibly be on a mobile device. Uh, like, so Diablo is what I was re- referencing to, um, or really mm-hmm. just um, was it BlizzCon when they announced the Diablo yeah. Immortal. Uh, yeah. So like that game seems like it might work on the phone, like the uh, Diablo game, but I just don't see how a horror game like Alien, uh, assuming it keeps the same type of like thing would work well on a mobile device i just i don't know it sucks because i know a lot of people liked alien isolation i didn't play it either um i don't love horror games but i did watch my buddy play it Mm -hmm. i like watching other people play horror games uh and he he seemed to enjoy it he'd only play a couple levels at a time but i'm sure when he finds out that he's not gonna be happy about this either yeah isolation was a popular twitch game actually um and you know back when people still like tried to find a, a good reason to have a connect on xbox one you know they the connect would actually monitor like your heart rate while you played and people found a way to put that on you know their stream and stuff and i think that added to the atmosphere of it and a lot of people enjoyed watching other people play that game um ram that to answer what you said before um of course they don't care because they care about one thing. They care about making money. And that's just the truth. That's not saying they're evil or whatever. It's it's not a charity. Mm-hmm. It's, it's much cheaper to make a mobile game than it is to make a console game. Your sales potential on a, on a mobile game, take out the microtransactions, just your sales potential for the base game on mobile is infinitely higher than what it is on console. So your ROI is already potentially much better and your microtransactions on top of that can make you an absolute fortune. Yes. Yeah, mobile gamers dwarf console gamers uh, when you look at just sheer numbers. Now, when you look at things like, you know, people are having an uproar on social media and all this stuff, and I don't blame them. Like I said, I'm on their side here. But let's just look at the reality of this. So when you go to YouTube and you see that it has like more than 200,000 down votes or whatever, or dislikes or whatever, against only a few likes, like they don't care about that either because those people are not representative of the quote gaming public as a whole. People that listen to this show are also not really representative because they care enough about it to listen to a video game podcast and pay attention to E3 and do all that stuff. Most gamers out there don't. They don't go to that level. So what they're going after is the casual, the super casual, that just likes playing stuff on their phone. And, you know, the we'll see how it performs for them. I've never personally been one to like playing any sort of, like, quote, serious type game on my phone or on a tablet. Nope. I want that on a console or PC. I Same. tried it with Deus Ex, and I did not enjoy it. I'm like, okay, I'm I'm getting mm-hmm. out of this. Yeah. Same thing. I bought Final Fantasy. I think Tactics on my iPad. I haven't touched it yet. Um, I just enjoy games on my phone that take five minutes. I think a lot of people do, like Candy Crush. You know, yeah. you can do a level in a minute or two, and I mean, there is a very addictive nature to it. But uh, so you don't ever play for a minute or two. You play for ten to twenty to longer but you just like pulling it out and playing when you're bored somewhere or waiting in line you know at the grocery store like that's what you do i don't know i would never play a game where i had to sit down and play on my phone for like two hours that just does not sound fun for me well and i think um, i think mobile is 
custom built for those turn-based type games where you can play your turn and then set it down. And wait, yeah, that too. You know, for, for the other person. So, yeah, multiplayer game. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Graham have been playing each other in Words with Friends, where he cheats in epic fashion. <laughs> Swear, That's I how swear. you know who wins. Uh, Tyler, but, when Tyler accuses and, someone of cheating, you know you know and, he lost. <laughs> and um, Graham, you, you play words that, that none of us has ever heard of, ever. But anyway, that's beside the point. And we play each other in the Dice with Buddies game, and then those are fun. Like, those are great for mobile. I would never want to play that on console. That would be excruciatingly boring after, like, 20 minutes. So... Being able to play a turn, set it down, and then play another turn, you know, a couple hours later or a day later or whatever. that, that That's, to me, what mobile gaming is about. Or the games like Candy Crush where you can play through a level in, what, like three minutes? No, I'm not di- I'm not addicted to Candy Crush. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so, yeah. And, you know, and I think that the way those games work makes it really easy for some people to just go down the rabbit hole of microtransactions. Because you're only spending like three dollars at a time, five dollars at a time. Yes, you know. No, for sure. And Grant, uh, I, you've done I know, it before. I've done it before, right? Uh, I've never done it on Candy Crush, and that's one thing I'm going to try to stick to because because yep. it's one of those ones where eventually the level just works out that you'll beat it. You just need to be patient. Uh, patient. <laughs> um, but I used to play Simpsons Tapped Out on my iPad, and I absolutely loved it. And I spent a fair bit on it. And because I was like kind of justifying it by, okay, I've been playing this for three years. Like I'll play a video, pay $80 for a video game, play it, beat it, and then I'll be done with it. But if it's something I'm playing for a year straight, I'm like, well, I can spend a hundred dollars or whatever on it. Right. But I've stopped playing it right now. So I, I know there is a huge market like the mobile for sure. And I know a lot of people spends money on it and like you're saying like five dollars here three dollars here and stuff like that it's easy to justify it and it adds up so mobile is is pretty much genius everyone has phones yeah uh, not everyone has tablets but pretty much everybody has a phone right so why wouldn't you tap in that market i mean steven you and i look at like madden ultimate team bundles for like 90 dollars, and we're like what the hell you know and so for somebody to spend three dollars that's nothing to them nothing yeah. So, yeah, I just, I get why people are upset. I'm upset too. I would rather have a proper console sequel, something on console and PC. But nah, I get why they're doing it too from a business standpoint. These games generally don't sell all that well on console. Like, the people who love them love them. But they generally don't sell, you know, incredibly well compared to some of the other AAA titles. So, all right. Uh, CES was this week, guys. Yes. Exciting. And everybody out there, if you are in the market for a new TV on a budget, um, nothing this week was for you. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Not but, even close. But uh, there were a couple pretty cool things we saw that relate to the world of gaming. And, and like, the AMD show happened. And, you know, check that out if you want more information on that. We're not going to, like, dive into that here. But we focus mostly on console gaming, so we're going to talk about the TVs, and there were two that really stood out. So the first is LG's 65-inch roll-up TV that they kind of introduced last year, but they really showed it off this year, and it comes out later this year. No price attached to it, which means it's going to cost an absolute fortune. <laughs> yeah. But they didn't this... want to scare people away with their yeah. price. But this thing, and if you're uh, watching on Twitch right now, you actually see the video of it and how it works, but... Literally, it's like a base, a rectangular base, and the thing just, the TV just, like, rises from the base up. It rolls and unrolls uh, from the base. Guys, uh, any interest in this TV? Steven, I'm sure you've pre-ordered it already. Uh, <laughs> so, how much, A, how much do you think it's going to cost, and B, like, any interest whatsoever? So... Twenty to thirty thousands, my guess. Maybe as low as fifteen, but I doubt it. I think twenty to thirty is a safe bet. Um, no interest at whatsoever. I just, I don't know. I, I'd worry that it would get stuck, and then I'd have to like ship it in for like a warranty. And I don't know. I, you know, I never want to be the first person 
to uh, you know test these products because you know you know they suck the first the first time they come out. So yeah, no interest. Um, it, yeah, but I I can't see it being less than twenty thousand dollars. All things considered, with with some of the other things, I don't know. What do you Graham, think, Graham? Same Graham. questions to you. So, if I had a I wouldn't say a ridiculous amount of money, but but if I had a lot of money, then and I'd be like Steven, I would want to get the first ones because even if this prototype they've opened and closed it fifty thousand times and no issues, when you mass produce something, there's a chance that there's defective or certain scenario, maybe I'll have it close to a heater and from the heat from that, like it'll give it problems. But I am interested in it. I think it looks amazing. And not only does it look amazing, it's super cool. Like, can you imagine impressing the people? Check out my TV. And they're like, doesn't look like TV me. It's like, just wait. And they're like, yeah. But obviously, nostalgia would uh, wear off. But it's got a lot of cool little features how it doesn't, like, you can have it uh, retract not all the way in. And then, like, some apps pop up. So you can, like, do, like, a music player or maybe, like, some pictures and stuff like that. And then if it's down all the way, it's like a like a speaker. Like I don't think it's a Bluetooth speaker. It could be, like the definitely potential is there. But it's super cool. And as far as price, I would say probably gonna be around a fifteen thousand mark. Um, just because OLED technology has been around for a little bit now, so it's cheaper and it's a sixty five inch. So you can't have it as an astronomical value unless you get like a, like a 10 foot one or something like that. Then I can see the price being ridiculously priced. But I think they'll try to make it somewhat affordable. So maybe. Yeah. Um, so our, our uh, Twitch community right now is guessing prices as well. And a lot of them are like $8,000, 8500 Yeah. I like I the 8500 price. <laughs> I'll buy it. <laughs> I, I think you guys are like wishful thinking right now mm-hmm. like there's a good amount of that going on in our chat um you know we we looked earlier today just for kind of frame of reference and on best buy like the most expensive tv they sell is what was an 88 inch tv for twenty thousand dollars it doesn't have this technology of like being soup like paper thin basically yeah and rolling up into the base yeah, yeah, with the sound so, bar and what you assume is all the yep. like the HDMI ports on the box itself. Yep. Where it's still yeah. So come on, y'all, y'all um, crazy. I I absolutely think this is going to land somewhere between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars. It's the first iteration, which means you are paying for a lot of the R and D that went into it. Yep. And yeah, this thing could go cheaper than fifteen thousand within a year or two but the oh, yeah. first that first iteration is no there is no way that is less than five figures and i i think there's no way it's less than 15 yeah, maybe 30 is a little like, high but i yeah i think 30 might be a bit high 15 to, to 20 25 it's, maybe at the most it's like you know it's like they say about like the pharmaceutical industry yeah any pill there's no way any pill costs you know a thousand dollars to make you know, they're really cheap. But the first one costs hundreds of thousands of dollars to make. And you're paying for that R&D. And I think it's the same thing here. Yep. So I think uh, I think it's going to be more than what we're thinking. Now, if it's $8,500, man, if, uh, if I got lucky on a scratch game or something, I might consider something like that just for fun. Yeah. But and I you think, know that- yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, you know they're going to mark the price up a little bit because you know the people that want this are going to will, are willing to shell yes. out a little extra for it. Your early so, adopters are always willing to pay an absolute fortune for stuff just to have it first. It's It was true with, like, Blu-ray. It's true with um, HD. It's true with 4K. Soon 8K. I don't, not, I don't know what the difference between 4K and 8K is going to be or how, like, eye-popping that's going to be, you know? I think we're going to reach that diminishing returns point at some point. I think but... eight is going to be where it ends. Oh, they, no. They, there will be no probably, end. I would say they'll probably try to push it, though, but at one point it's just getting ridiculous and just like a, not really a novelty thing, but uh, just a gimmick. That's the word I'm looking for. Well, Graham, gimmick. eventually they're just going to teleport the actors to your living room <laughs> and do it that way. But so if you're if you're like... 
hey, that's that TV's too cheap for me. I want I want to go big, really big. Well, they've got something there for you too. Uh, Samsung unveiled a 219 inch TV that they're calling the wall. And the thing is like 18 feet. <laughs> I'm not even sure that could fit on my wall. Uh, not my wall. So, uh, guys, same questions. Like, I mean, I, I think we can eliminate the any interest question because I don't think any of us is, you know, in the market for that. Again, <laughs> patreon.com slash gaming hub. <laughs> yeah. But, well, how much do you think this thing's going to be? <laughs> um so is this an oled tv do we know do we know much on this i'm guessing it is yeah it is i mean you're not going to make this without making it so, the like oh cream of the crop you know i'm thinking like thirty thousand. <laughs> oh cram i think you're way under you you are way under this is gonna be we, we were talking about this before this is gonna be like 80 to a hundred thousand dollar tv um yeah, it's it's massive. Like this this TV is going to be for like the rich and famous, like your athletes, your movie stars, uh, and ever and like your really successful businessmen. But I, I do agree that this will be a top of the line model. This will be their best like TV, just scaled huge. Um, would it be cool for sure for movies and TV? Game of I would on not. That? <laughs> I would not play video games on a TV that big. I just don't. I, th- I imagine there'd be some input lag with that. But for movies, this would be a perfect TV for like a movie room for like your your superstar athletes and your your rich actors and actresses. And you would need a pretty big room to house this. So Oh, yeah. I, I think playing a competitive shooter on this thing would be hell. Oh, yeah. I think oh, you'd yeah. get destroyed. For yep. sure. Because you can't. There's no way you can see everything at the same time. So... Yeah, I, but I'm with you, Stephen. Like, this thing's going to cost well north of $75,000 at first. A couple years from now, we might see it come down to fifty. Yeah, I don't think we're going to see it lower than forty. And uh, we might be totally wrong. This thing might come out. It might be like thirty grand, but I think that's the cheapest it would maybe possibly be. If it's but, thirty, I think there's a decent amount of people that would pick it up. Yeah. But uh, I, I see this being north of 75000 I see it being closer to six figures, honestly, if not more. But, yeah, it is insane that we're getting a TV that big. Yeah, this TV is for, like, also, I, I forgot, like, uh, you know, your your stadiums, right? Your, your sports yes. stadiums and arenas. Um, this would be a perfect TV for a lot of those places. And they could afford it because um, it's just gigantic. Because mm-hmm. I know a lot of them now, like, kind of do the checkerboard thing where they like put 16 pretty big TVs together to make one large screen. Yep. Uh, yep. And then, you know, you have the little black lines that separate each TV and that kind of is annoying to some people. But I mean, once you watch it long enough, you, you hardly notice it, but I, I do, I could see it being bought by one of them um, yeah. for, yeah, for sure. Yeah. All right. So um, those are the TVs available. Well, there's plenty more, but those are the two that really stood out to us. Yeah. This week, while we were looking at CES. Yeah, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say real quick before we move on. Um, it's not in our news topics, but on the topic of, like, giant TVs, did you guys see that that someone was caught playing Mario Kart on the, the Kauf, it was I think it's Kauffman Stadium, Kansas City Royal Stadium. They were playing oh, really? Mario Kart on their, jumb, on their Jumbotron um, <laughs> in center field. But the, their Jumbotron's really weird shaped, so, like, it yeah. wasn't very wide. It was very tall. Yes. So it would be hard to play Mario Kart on that. But, I mean, I think it was more for the, you know, just playing Mario Kart on that. I remember a couple of years ago someone played, I think it was Madden on Dallas's uh, scoreboard oh, yeah. over, like over the 50-yard line. Yeah, yep. the big the big. Well, thing. I think it's so, over every yard line pretty much. Well, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> that TV is huge. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. So, <laughs> But I just – I saw that yesterday and I thought we'd throw it in since we're on that topic. So. Yeah, no, that's cool. All right. <laughs> So we also decided we wanted to do some predictions for 2019 uh, during this episode. And, you know, we're there, there's a few of these that we'll probably discuss a little bit, but 
you know, if there's anybody out there in the community that wants to like keep score on these over the course of the year and see how we did, uh, you know, feel free. But we uh, we wanted to make some predictions and we wanted to kind of stay away from the remasters because those are kind of easy. So I'll go ahead and kick us off here. So my first prediction for 2019 is that we will see the the discless. Um, Xbox One announced and released in 2019. I think it's probably going to be... Uh, I think there's two windows where it could happen. It could happen over the course of the early part of the summer. Uh, we all know what takes place there. And possibly early part of the fall. So, uh, guys, any any interest in an Xbox One without a, a disk drive? No. I mean, no, because no, I just don't want to buy another Xbox right. One. I, I'd be interested in... Um, I'd think about it for next gen think about it i don't think um i i don't think i would i'd purchase a new one just for that i just don't see the reason yeah i uh, i agree with steven i already have a one x and a one s and even if it's better a bit better than a one s there's really no reason for me to pick it up uh, i still buy discs i buy digital as well and if i just had a box i'm like oh i can't play this game i can only play this like i i don't know Unless there's a, like a download way, but there's really no reason for me to get it, so I have no I, intentions. You I, could I be see right, this, though. Yeah, I see this as being just a super entry level type thing, just to get people into the Xbox family at the end. Yeah, you know, so that when the new console comes out, they might, uh, you know, upgrade and get the next gen in 2020. So, oh, so you see this as not even an X, just a regular Xbox One? Yeah, absolutely. So yes. then the smart play. I think it's comparable the problem, to the S, just the without the the disc drive. The smart play then would be to mark or to include like twelve months of Game Pass with it, um, so you know you yeah. have games you can play on the internet and you sell it for like cheap. Like I'm talking two hundred bucks. I'm thinking, and I, if you could figure out a way to do it for one fifty, that would be that'd be like really smart, I think, but mm. probably not doable. But two hundred, I think, is a good price point. For I think one ninety nine is a really good price point. Yep. Uh, All right. And then you can mark that down to 150 on um, Black Friday, and there you go. If it comes out, you know, early enough. All right, who stuff. wants to go next? I'll go. I'll go next. Um, yeah. so PSX will make its triumphant return at the end of next year, and it will be the first time we see a teaser for PlayStation Five since you know PlayStation is, or Sony is skipping E3. So we're not going to see the teaser there, obviously. They're not going to be there. But I do think PSX makes its return. I think it's probably their biggest PSX ever. Um, and like I said, PS5 gets shown at some in some way. It might be a full-on announcement, but I, I foresee maybe a more teasery thing. And it gets announced fully right before E3 2020. 2020, 2020 yep. So. Okay. Yeah, I'm with you. I think that's probably going to happen. I'll I'll have something to add to this in a little bit after Graham goes. But um, do you see any concrete release dates for any of their upcoming games? Uh, no. See, I disagree. I think at PSX, if if they have it, and if PS like, well, they're going to have it. It's my prediction. <laughs> um, and PS Five will get shown. I do think they announced like Death Stranding for instance, to be fall of 2020. And that kind of seals in the deal of when PS5 is going to be released, which is why I could actually see them potentially making this PSX their big announcement. That I, I'm not going to predict that sh for sure because mm -hmm. I'm still on the fence, but I could see that happening. They That's why PSX will be so big because they'll announce PS5, they'll announce that, like their launch title is going to be like massive with some of the games they have slated, uh, like Death Stranding. Um, I think if, if that's the case, Last of Us Two gets a a spring release as the swan song for PS4, the same way that the first game was a swan song for the PS3, mm -hmm. and it'll get remastered and probably a collection to come out on the on the PS5. So it'll get one and two remastered right when okay. PS5 comes out, and that's that's my bold prediction. I All could right. totally see it happening. I think it'd be smart of Sony to do it. So real real quick before I go to Graham here, uh, we had a question in Twitch I want to address just in case anybody else listening is kind of thinking the same thing. But So they said, so they have to ask if, if uh, Xbox releases a uh, console without a disk drive this year, are we still getting a Scarlet reveal this year? And yes, 
And I think the reveal is going to be very similar to what we saw at E3 16, where they just did the real short, like, video showing off, like, maybe some of the specs, like teraflops and stuff, you know. Nothing real extreme. We're not going to see the, con we're not going to get a name for it. We're not going to get anything like that. It's just that, hey, it's coming, and we'll see... They'll probably have a like private event where it's just Xbox in the early part of 2020, same as Sony, and we'll we'll get a lot more there. But yeah, anyway. I, I I agree with you, Tyler. Yeah, I think on I think E3 they will be announcing. Well, they kind of announced it, but they'll go more into it. Yep. All right, Graham. Okay, so for me, uh, speaking of E3 last year. They talked about, well, EA talked about EA Premium for PC only. And I really thought they were going to announce it for Xbox as well. But they didn't. So I'm predicting that this year they will announce EA Premium for Xbox uh, owners. To me, th this makes sense. Like, why, why would you just have it on PC when you're on both PC and Xbox, like EA Access, so, to me, this seems like pretty pretty easy prediction, but I still could be wrong. But uh, I think that they would be it'd be a misstep if they kept this to PC. We we would like to see this, and I would take advantage of this, and I know you guys would probably do the same. Yeah, if if you can get, you know, I would absolutely pay a hundred bucks a year or whatever it is for that if I'm getting all of EA's titles at launch. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah, so. All right. I would as well. All right. Um, I like that prediction. I, I think that's pretty likely, actually. I think there's a good chance of that. So, all right. So, I'm going to build on Stevens here. Uh, the PS5 is going to have a peripheral that has similar functionality to the Switch. So, it might be like uh, an upgraded version of, um, God, what's it called? The, the one they gave up on. The uh, Vita. Yeah, the Vita. Sorry. Uh, it might be something like that, but I think it's going to be have that, uh, you know, play on the go capability while also being a box that sits on your entertainment center um, at the same time. So, but I don't think it's going to be mandatory and I don't think it's going to be in the box for everybody. I think it's something that people can get if they want. They can get the upgraded bundle or they can buy it separately at a later time and easily link it and through cloud storage and all that stuff we should be able to make that happen but i i absolutely see them doing that uh sony has never been shy about you know sort of piggybacking on things that they see other people doing really well and that's that's not a knock on them like that's good business so i i wouldn't be surprised at all if we saw something like that from the ps5 uh when it's sort of teased uh later on this year thoughts on that guys yeah, so it to be if if you guys are having trouble picturing that, think of like the Wii U tablet, except you can take it farther than like twenty feet away from the the console. Like you can almost take it. You could take it on the go, right? Right, Tyler. Like the Switch, same way, where you could take yeah, exactly. it. And, yep. Yeah, but it, it'd probably look like the the Wii U tablet or something like that. So that's that's the way I thought of it when you told me about this. So that might help you guys if you can't picture it. Um, but yeah, I, I think that is a, a likely scenario that they announce something like that. Um, if, especially if they have PSX this year. Yeah, Graham. Yeah. So with the success of the Nintendo switch and you, nobody can deny that it hasn't been successful. Um, why wouldn't either Sony or Microsoft try to tap into this market? And it seems like Sony is the more viable uh, company to do it uh, because, like I said, they had the Vita. And when I originally looked into the Vita, like this was a nice while ago, they were talking about how you could kind of do that, but it was like so many lag issues and it was, it was just a complete disaster. So it seems like this is something that Sony has been wanting to do. So it could very well be like they need something to, I don't know about one up, but try to compete with uh, Microsoft. Because we all think, well, they have the PSVR, but I think this would be a huge thing if they had this one up on Microsoft and people went for it. So it, that's a pretty safe bet. I'm interested to see exactly the approach they go. 
if it's yeah. like a standalone thing like the Switch or if it's like a peripheral that like you upload the game to and then you can take it on to go and then it transfers the save over. I'm not quite sure, but uh be interesting to see. I, I think that's an interesting uh, prediction yeah, on your it, part. Brother. It's probably going to require like updates and downloading stuff while you're at home on your home network, but then be able to take it and play on the go. So I... And I, and I think it'll be very similar to Switch, where when you're in handheld mode, you're not getting the same resolution mm-hmm. and all that type of thing. So it's a, a little bit of a downgrade there, but it still provides that. I think there's absolutely no chance Xbox does something like this. They, they've they really shied away from stuff like that since the Kinect disaster. And they're, they're really dragging their feet on VR, and we don't know if we're ever, ever going to see that from them for, for the Xbox console. So, yeah, but... I think uh, I think if anybody's going to do it, Graham, I agree with you. I think Sony is the one who would do it, and I think they have the install base in terms of customers to to make it work. So, all right, who is up next, Steven? Me. So uh, I predict that Nintendo will have the most by sheer qual- or quantity, but also the best exclusives coming in 2019. Um, I, and I don't think it's close, and I think it culminates with a, a Nintendo exclusive winning Game of the Year at the Game Awards. Uh, I think there'll be something in there that, that will win that's not just a port. I know Fire Emblem comes out this year. Animal Crossing comes out this year. Uh, those are my two of my favorites. But Luigi's Mansion, I bet you they have some other stuff up their sleeve. And there's Kirby and, I, and Yoshi. Yep. yep. So I, like, they definitely have the, well, the numbers. I think they also will have the best um one of the bunch yeah i'm i'm with you sorry to cut you off there didn't mean to (laughs) to wrap it up but i'm with you because when you look at the the big hitters from the competition for 2019 like you know sony we're getting days gone but as far as their other big tentpole releases we have no idea when those games are coming out and none of them are coming this year so days gone is coming that is not game that's my i'll predict it's not one of my predictions but that is not going to be game of the year material it's going to be probably decent and good, but it's probably not going to be game of the year material. On the Xbox side, your two kind of big hitters are Ori, the sequel. That's a, that's a smaller game. And not to say that that can't be considered for game of the year for that reason, but the other one is Gears 5, and Gears 4 was fun, and it's good, and I have no reason to think Gears 5 won't be, but they've never really been game of the year type games. They've just been like silly shooter fun, you know, type stuff. So I, I'm, I'm with you. I 100% think this is going to be sort of the year of Nintendo, just like last year was sort of the year of Sony. Graham? I I would love for this to be uh, the year of Nintendo, as like I've been preaching Nintendo for a while and getting people to get Switch. I even had some listeners go out and buy a Switch, and good to hear that stuff, because um, they do have great games, great exclusives, and I think that's a pretty good prediction with uh what we know what's come from Sony, which we don't know much. Microsoft, we don't know much coming either. And Nintendo already has a pretty good list. And some of those games, like Animal Crossing, people will be dying to get their hands on. I'm predicting that game will sell really well. Uh, but that brings me to my next prediction. Uh, uh, sticking with Nintendo. Well, no, sorry, not Nintendo. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I'll do this one. I think there will be an upgraded Nintendo Switch announced. Uh, I think it will be a little more powerful in handheld. I think the battery will be better. Overall, uh, party chat. They're going to get party chat right, right this time. I swear. I swear they're going to get it right this time. There's going to have Bluetooth. Uh, this could be wishful thinking, but I think it kind of fits in the timeline where it's been out now for a couple years. And I, I think this kind of goes along with when they upgraded their handhelds. So that might be a bold prediction. I would love to see it, even though I just bought a second one recently. I'll probably buy another one, uh, especially if they come out with a, a special edition, because I'm a bit of a sucker for those. Uh, I don't know, Tyler. Will this help you get you back into the, playing your Nintendo Switch? What do you think no. of this prediction? I mean, I, I can see it happening for sure. I, I think you know, consoles have been known to do this over the course of the life cycle of, of any system, you know, they release sort of that, you know, sleeker, slimmer, lighter, you know, with better functionality at the same time and um, all that type of thing. I think grand party chat can probably be fixed with an update 
Like if they really just went after it. I don't know if the I think they need Bluetooth. The... Yeah, okay, so I can go with that. But then aren't you sort of splitting your base a little bit? I mean, do you really want to make people feel like they have to upgrade to this new one? Because that's one thing Xbox has been really good at over the course of this generation is they've, you know, they've they've released the S and then the X, but they've never really made people feel like you have to have it. You know, it's just bonus stuff if you do. I think if you find a way to make the base like the thing that can get the Bluetooth or whatever you want, mm-hmm. however you want to word it, that that'd probably be the okay. best way because that yeah. that's cheap or cheaper than buying a whole new console. I do agree that there will be a new Nintendo Switch, like an yeah, upgraded version, mm-hmm. um, potentially with 1080p or better graphics and better battery life, both mm-hmm. handheld. Well, graphics for both and then battery life for handheld, obviously. So yeah, but I. I don't know if they care enough to fix party chat. And I don't know if I, I know you guys are in disagreement. I just, I don't think Nintendo needs it. I just, I don't know. I, I like that. I don't need to worry about, you know, talking to people on, on the switch. It's not something I'm interested in. So it doesn't but if they, yeah. they want to compete and stuff like that and maybe be a primary console, then they need that for sure. Guess what? They're already competing. They're selling yeah. massive amounts of the console. Um, and creating great games. I don't think it's the same. I don't think it's the same market as 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 mm. the market for Xbox and PlayStation. Yeah. And I don't think Nintendo wants it to be. Yeah, and that's a really fair point. And I, I just kind of thought of it that way too. Like, you know, there's something to be said for saying that. You know, it's a lot harder to encounter some of the you know colossal a holes um, out there online on our system than it is on others. Yeah. In fact, it's almost impossible. So, there's that. Uh, I did uh, our chat threw out one thing here that I wanted to say. Like somebody said that they think Last of Us Two is absolutely coming this year. I'm going to disagree with that. And uh, you know that's when we're talking about we were talking about this kind of being the year of Nintendo. Um, Last of Us Two is not coming this year. Uh, I'm going to tell you they they just posted for uh, developers to work on like level design and building levels for them. If for that game specifically, I don't see when you're posting for that in January 19 that that's going to result in a game release at any point this year. And they don't need the game to come out this year. I think it's no. smarter to hold it. So, and I think they oh. will. Agreed. But you, right. you can hold out hope if you want. Yeah. <laughs> There's I, mean, I would hope. love it if it did. I would love it if it did, but I just don't think it's going to. All right. So my last one, we've got three. So um, this is, I, I've kind of alluded to this on the show before. This is the last time I'm going to predict it. Because if they burn me here, <laughs> I'm done. It's like Microsoft and VR. <laughs> Everyone I know. just gave up on it. Or Summer <laughs> Arcade, like. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, but I but I keep seeing, like, little things about it. So um, Bioshock 4 is going to be finally announced in 2019. And... Dun, dun. 2K said uh, repeatedly that this is a an ongoing franchise for them. They don't they they see this as something that's going to continue on. And there's been rumors that they've had people working on it. I think if if that's true, this year's the time that we finally see a reveal of what it is. I'm not saying it's going to come out this year, but we'll actually see that it's a thing and it's being worked on. Any thoughts, Stephen? I know you're not a huge Bowshot guy. Yeah, I hope. I mean, what what was it that you said uh, the other day when you were telling you you thinking that maybe it picks up right after the first game? Uh, well, I was, cuts, I, cuts I mean, the that, second and third one we're, out. We're, yeah, we we're kind of playing with different ideas. And my opinion, like I love the series overall, but the first one to me can stand on its own. The second one's okay; it's fine. The third one's really different. It's very good. It's just very different. But I think if you did. Sort of what the Halloween series did in movies, you know. Just say, all this other stuff, forget it. And this game is going to pick up after the ending of the first game and kind of continue that story. I think that might be a good way to go, so we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I hope it happens for all the people that I know like Bioshock. Um, I just, that's not me. (laughs) Yeah. I like the story, don't like the gameplay, what can I say? Mm -hmm. Yep. Graham? Yeah, and I personally have not played these games, Mm -hmm. um, so... Just for the sake of Tyler and other fans that really want this, I hope it is announced. And 
I'm just going to go ahead with my next prediction. Steven, I'm just gonna, just sticking with predicting games. I'm going to say Fable will finally be announced. And it's going to be, I'm, I'm guessing like a reboot. We kind of were talking about these two games. Uh, Tyler was saying Bioshock 4, but it could be a reboot. But I think Fable will be a reboot. They just want to start over and say, let's not think about what came after Fable 3. We're just going to start over. Yeah. It'll be the the fable. We're so sorry about Legends Edition. <laughs> and yes. that's that's what it'll be. And no, I'm with you. I think that absolutely can happen, Graham. And you know, Stephen, it's kind of the same thing for Fable with me that you have with Bioshock. So I I know there's a lot of people that love it. I don't, but I really hope this comes true for all the people out there that love it and really want to play it. So, Stephen, what, what do you think? What's the likelihood of that? I mean, I really hope we get Fable. Fable was probably the first, like, like RPG action game I really got into um, that got me into that, that sort of genre. Well, it was actually Fable 2. But, yeah, so I, I like the Fable series. I've beaten all three of them. Um, the third one was very, very, very bad. Uh, at the, well, at least the ending. Like, really silly but i don't know i I like the fable games i really do think a reboot would be smart i think change a little bit of the gameplay uh, make it a little more open world d but at the same time still keeping what makes fable fun fun so i hope it happens and i guess i'll go right into my prediction which is also a game prediction graham um (laughs) I think that Xbox has a surprise game coming out this year that is yet unannounced. Uh, my hope is an open world RPG, but I, it won't be a shooter and it won't be a racing game that much, as I predict. Uh, I think an open world game is likely. Um, I don't think it's like ReCore 2. Uh, well, I really hope it's not ReCore 2. I just <laughs> think I, I could see a, a open world RPG. It probably won't be super big. Uh, maybe from one of these new studios, maybe from internal, like Microsoft itself. I don't know. Uh, but I, I can see a surprise game. I don't think Ori and the Will of the Wisps, despite how excited I am and Graham is for that game, counts I am too. for yeah. their like gigantic like release. Uh, the only one is God of War 5. and Gear, Gears 5. Or Gears 5, yeah. Like, and if they scored not... God of War, Steven, that would be pretty awesome. Yeah, well, I was yeah. like, wow. Ge- Gears of War 5 is not good enough <laughs> for me for... Right. for the console as a release. So I, I can yeah. see them sneaking sneaking a release in there somewhere for hopefully a successful game. I guess that they also have Crackdown 3 coming out, but, you know, it's, the fact that I forgot shows how much people actually, like, count that game towards right. it. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's true. So, so let, me ask, let me ask this question real quick. And, you know, through 18, through 2018, we saw Xbox do everything, like, everything they did was designed around just building towards next gen's launch, getting things in place, whether promoting um, Game Pass or talking about having consoles that you know don't have a disk drive, or talking about this um, the thing where you're playing on your tablets, you know, um, on the go and all that type of thing, right? Do you think they care about getting another big like temple? franchise out there this year do you or do you think they care more about building towards that eventual release of their next console in 2020 and maybe saving it for that both i don't think i don't think that the an accident um, here sorry about that <laughs> i think you lost somebody <laughs> man down I, I it was empty though so we're good oh, there you go that's good <laughs> i don't <laughs> think the, that the release will be a tentpole franchise or yeah like a a new like you know new big one but i do think that there's probably something in the works with one of those studios they acquired that microsoft may have paid a little extra to make it an exclusive that they can announce as a like console exclusive and that that gets released this year to push something out maybe that's cynical i don't know i just i expect them to release Something I don't know. I don't think it'll be a tentpole tentpole franchise. I don't see like a Elder Scrolls type okay. or a Fable type even. Um, and I don't think Fable gets announced for this year. I think Graham's right; it gets announced. I just don't think it comes out. I'm talking a game that's coming out in 2019. So, so you're saying something they can hang their hat on and say, "Here's where we're going." 
something that like that type of game so like we're gonna have more um games in different genres this might not be a huge game it's not gonna necessarily be you know like you said elder scrolls type you know scope but something to say like we're gonna be different going forward yeah and if it's something along the lines of like spider-man though maybe not as long um, where it's like really fun. It's not really mm-hmm. a contender for game of the year. Maybe kind of a little bit, but not really. Like like really. Um, I, that that'd be success to me. Um, or even a Detroit Become Human. Like it's not yeah. super long, yeah. like ten hours, but yeah. still pretty cool. Like a little different. You know, show us that you can do something other than a shooter and or a racer. And. Well, when you- You'll, yeah. you'll make me happy. When you look at their lineup, they don't, and you compare it to Sony, they don't have games like, you know, Infamous. They don't have games like Uncharted. They don't have games like um, God of War. They don't have something, even like The Order 1886 or whatever, right? They don't have stuff like that. And I think they could go a long way with putting something out. Even like you said, if it's just like like a six-hour game, big deal. Like, get something out to say we're we're doing more and this is where we're going in the future. Yeah. So Graham, what, it, what do you think? No, sorry. Go ahead, Steven. Yeah, just real quick. Sorry, Graham. Don't mean to. No, no, go ahead. Shoehorn this conversation or, you know, take over this. But I, you have a benefit also, like, a six-hour game won't make people as mad as, like, The Order did because it comes to Game Pass. So, you know, if yes. you have Game Pass, you can play it for free there. Or, well, relatively free. You pay for Game right. Pass. But uh it's not like you're paying 60 dollars for a game that lasts three hours like a three-hour game when you get it for like on game pass without having to pay pay like i think won't make people mad um except that those mm-hmm. people aren't bright enough to you know utilize game pass for games you're not sure about uh because come on ten dollars well, <laughs> you can play the game like i know we shouldn't say but... bright enough but still like, <laughs> you're stupid. well don't get mad when you have the option <laughs> to try the game for ten dollars um, or even less, because they have deals on Game Pass all the time. So yeah, come on, it's kind of your own fault if you if you if you pay sixty dollars for a game and you get frustrated because you literally could have tried it for less than ten. Well, and every, every new console they sell should come with a free month of it. I don't know if it does or not, but it should. I think it does. Okay. Uh, maybe yeah, not quite a month, should. but you do get access. I think it should come with a free month, but required you to enter your card to activate it. You know. Just so, I mean so that's smart on Xbox's part, right? Rolled over and charged yeah. you. Oh, for sure. That's how a yeah. lot of those like freebies. I'm a yeah. victim yeah. of that with many things. <laughs> yep. yeah. uh, but Graham, sorry, what you were gonna say? Uh, I wasn't gonna say, but uh, I, I, you want to know my opinion? Um, no, I. That is a great prediction. Uh, Xbox definitely like last year it was like lackluster games and. Everyone's like, well, they don't really have games coming this year, but they got these studios. So I think if they announce a game and kind of blow people's minds, that would be an awesome. Especially, like, they've been kind of doing this thing now where they've been doing these surprise announcements, right? So maybe this is a surprise announcement, and they're like, and the game is available right now, or will be available in two months. So I think that's a great prediction, whether it be a nice open world game. Another game you guys didn't kind of mention to compete with is, um, well, I can't think of it right now. <laughs> it's the one with the robot dinosaurs. What's that called? PlayStation. Oh, Horizon. Yeah. Oh, Horizon yeah. Zero Dawn. Yep. Yeah. You're absolutely right. So kind of have like a competitor like for mm-hmm. that type of world and game. So I, I think that's what a lot of Xbox fans are looking for and would love to get their hands on. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping uh, most of our predictions are right. Mostly, mostly mine. No, I'm kidding. Oh, Everyone's. <laughs> All right. So those are our predictions for 2019 as, uh, as we kind of still kick off the year. We're still really early. But those are our predictions. And uh, that's going to do it for news. And let's move into releases. We'll start with Xbox. Now, where you can get uh, the Hitman HD Enhanced Collection on the 11th, which is actually the Friday tomorrow, the day after we record. But I wanted to point it out because it was just kind of dropped in. You can also get Hell Warders on the 17th and Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown on the 18th. Games with Gold, Celeste, still available. A uh, great game. Available through uh, Xbox One through the 31st, uh, WRC 6 through the 15th of February, and through backwards compatibility, Far Cry 2 through the 31st of January. Stephen, what can we get on PlayStation? 
All right. Um, also coming tomorrow uh, to to the PlayStation is is that Hitman HD Enhanced Collection and Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition. Um, and then on the 15th, you can get Smoke and Sacrifice. Uh, for PS Plus games, you can get Steep and Portal Knights through the end of the month. Graham, Nintendo. Still trying to get people to play Steep. Okay, for Nintendo, you can get The Walking Dead, the Telltale series, the final season, episode number three, titled Broken Toys. That will be on the 15th. And then on the 17th, you can get Gunman Clive HD Collection. And then finally on the 18th, we have Travis Strikes Again, No More Heroes. Those are for the Nintendo Switch. All right, sounds good. Let's head into questions. Before we do that, I just want to point out, Graham, you you mentioned Steve. One of the three of us has actually purchased that game. Really? Who would would do such a silly thing as that? (laughs) Someone, Someone who doesn't understand that the problems with um storing your credit card information and consuming some spirits on weekends <laughs> well i know who that is <laughs> you do Steven, is that is that the recipe that resulted in that uh correct also mixed in with being finals week and finishing that um is when i bought it so <laughs> i had just finished school like a hard semester that was one of my hardest it was just an insane amount of work um, I was drinking, and it was with my card that was on my Xbox. It was not the only game I purchased that night. I think I also drunk purchased one of the Call of Duties. It might have been Black Ops Three. All right. Um, so whichever <laughs> Call of Duty came out that year was a was a double purchase along with Steep. Because Steep actually had me excited. Like when I saw it at E3, I'm like, I like the SSX games. I thought it would be like a little more realistic version of that. It it wasn't. Uh, it was it was enjoyable, but not great. Um, yeah, I regret purchasing it, but, you know, I did, and what can you do? Yeah. Do you regret? How much of Steep did you actually play? Five, six hours, maybe more. I'll oh. tell you, I regret purchasing Fallout 76 more than I regret purchasing Steep. Uh, let's get some of that yeah. hate mail coming in. Ouch. All right. <laughs> Gaming podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, so, get Steven with a V. <laughs> Make sure it don't spell it. <laughs> Let's go into questions. So, what do we have? All right, Damn. Sandman uh, asks, "What is your favorite romance in any video game?" Okay, I'm gonna go with The Witcher Three, with Geralt and Venifer. Yennefer. Okay. Sorry, Yennefer. <laughs> Yennefer. I, I knew it's like Jennifer, but not. It's, it's yeah. Yennefer. Yes, yeah. I think that's a great story. Uh, when I played The Witcher 3, I was just, I was full into that game. I loved the story, loved the characters, and that one stands out to me by far. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one for sure. Mine, I, it's not exactly a romance in the same way that, like, you know, your Mass Effects or your Witchers hey, you are. Be- you better not take mine here. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, mine is, is, is Sora and Kyrie from Kingdom Hearts, and it's... It's more like a friend mance type of thing. They're not because they're kind of young, so it'd be kind of weird, you know. But that that was always kind of what what motivated the okay. Kingdom Hearts series was Sora getting back to Kyrie, and it kind of took off the like. It's how the story started and how the story has been going. Um, and you know, there's other things that happen, but that's kind of one of the ones that always like, always like, you know, makes me a little little tear up when I see the mm-hmm. the music videos at the beginning and the ends of games when they're like reaching for each other and then they don't catch each other. It's just mm-hmm. it makes me sad. But I love, I love those two like characters, and it always has motivated me in that story as a whole. So, okay. yeah. What about you, Tyler? So mine isn't a conventional romance either. Um... But I, I really love what the story between Master Chief and Cortana becomes over the course of the series. And there is like, there's like a love for each other there. It's not like, you know, um, like a traditional, in a traditional sense. But, but there, there definitely is. And when you see, what is it, Halo 4, the end of that? Right? Yeah. Spoilers, like, but. Yeah, spoiler alert. But <laughs> I'm right, not going to get into right. what happens. But when you see it, like it's it, you know, affects you if you're invested in the series. Yes, I agree. I agree with that. So, I, I knew I, that was yours when you said, yeah. you know, I, I hope you don't take mine." Yeah. But no, I I've 
I've always, you know, really enjoyed how that relationship evolves throughout the series, and I think that's really good storytelling by them. All right. Between two different developers, by the way, so that's really good, too. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. All right. All right. Next question. Tony said, if you had a choice to live in any TV series, which one would it be? And do you think you'd be the main character? Or a main character? I think everybody always thinks they'd be, like, a main character. Don't, don't you? Yes. Yeah, I think, um, I think so. Yeah, you know, I think back to some of my favorite series, like, you know, 24. I'm not sure I'd want to live in that environment. Nope. <laughs> That's not a whole lot of fun. Um, the X Files, there's some appeal there. Uh, the West Wing, sure, but I'd have to go with South Park. Just the craziness of it all. Like that would just be. It would never ever be uh, boring. <laughs> so I would have to go with that. Is it like a cartoon world where you don't really feel pain? And... Sure, we'll go with that. Sure. Okay. Yeah. I, there's no way I would live in Game of Thrones. Um, and that's my favorite TV show. Yeah. Absolutely. 100%. There's a good chance you'll be Hard dead. Pass. Hard you'll pass. Be dead. You'll be dead um, soon. <laughs> not even as main character, because those, you know, anyone who watches Game of Thrones knows that they yeah. they always seem to die. You know what? I think I would go with I'd want to live in Pawnee in Parks and Rec. That would be and I would want to work in the Parks and Rec, like uh, what's the office or, you know, the city. I, the you know the government building with you know Ron Swanson and Leslie Nope and all that that would be just mad entertaining um, and just pretty cool I think that'd be fun so that would be my choice. Yeah, there's there's a lot of worlds that I would not want to live in. Um, they're fun to watch and see how other people live and survive in these worlds, but I I'm gonna go kind of the route that uh, Tyler did. I might think of a better answer later. But I would say in Springfield, in the Simpsons world, because there's just so much eventful stuff. And I could just watch Homer make a complete fool of himself. And yeah, that, that would be fun. I, I know that I know a lot of the characters and I'm kind of invested in it. So I would be Simpsons for sure. So great answer from our community, by the way. Somebody threw out Westworld. I didn't even think yes, of that. Westworld would be cool. Westworld's nope. amazing. Well, I still need to watch the second season, but yeah, love that yeah. show. As long as I couldn't, you know, die, then sure. Um, and definitely would want to be one of the humans, not the uh, robots, <laughs> for sure. Because um, you, you never know if you're a character. You could be any of them. But, uh, so, next question, then. Uh, from KC, he said, if you had to give up one, which would it be? Video games, music, or movies and TV shows? I don't like, well... I, I think movies and TV shows should be a separate category as they're two different things, but that's not the question. I, I guess answer it as a combined thing, even though that's ridiculous. So go ahead. One of you. All right, Graham, go ahead. I will go. Um, so I wouldn't want to go without any of them, but if I had to choose one, I would go. Whew, that is tough. Um, Probably, it's tough. I'm gonna, go <laughs> I'm gonna go TVs and movies. I wish movies wasn't tied in there, but I can definitely go without a lot. Of, I go, I'd go without TV shows if I had a choice. But uh, music is definitely a staple in my life that I definitely would not go out with. So it'd be a toss between video games and uh, TV and video games, or All right. uh, movies. Um, I'll, I'll go next, and I'm gonna break Graham's heart here, but. It's gonna be music. That's fine. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be music, and you know, it's it's one of those things. Like, I like music. I've just like, so I kind of envy, you know, someone like you, Graham, who gets this real connection with it. You know, because mm-hmm. I just really never have. I know, and I, I always say I feel bad for people like that, but that's mm-hmm. that's just the way it is, though, right? That's yeah. So how things are. like, even when I just listen to like radio, it's often like sports talk radio stuff like that. You know. Uh, mm-hmm. I generally listen to a lot of podcasts, things like that, when I have, when I'm in a position to listen to something, you know, like whether it's driving or whatever, right? Um, music just doesn't, like, it's nothing against it. No. It's not that I, I don't like it, it's just that I don't, like, have this, like, deep connection with it that some people do. So, Stephen? 
I think that our Twitch community just said, yeah, if, you, genius. if you got rid of music, your movies and games won't have music in them. And that will ruin a lot of the shows you like um, in ways you might not notice. Uh, or you might not notice now. And you would definitely notice if it wasn't there. So I was going to say, like, music would be hard because I like... I don't listen to it all that much, but I do like playing music. I play the piano. I've gotten back into it, and I love playing the piano, and I, I'd miss it a lot. <sighs> I think, I, I'd think i miss movies and TV shows, so I know I'm on a gaming podcast, but I, it'd be video games if I had to give up one because I could – assuming – I mean – It'd be me playing, right? So I can still watch people play video games, which I no, do a No, no, no. Video games no, are shut up. out of your world. No, come on. Yes. All right, fine. I'd still do it. Because <laughs> I, there are days where I don't feel like playing games, and I just want to veg out and watch like a movie or a TV show. And if I didn't have that, that'd be kind of frustrating. And I love a lot of movies and TV shows. And there are a lot of days... Like, I've never had days where I don't want to watch something, like movies and TV shows. So if I had to give up one, and I thank God I don't, um, it'd be it'd be video games. Now, if movies and TV shows were two separate categories, as they should be because they're different, it would be TV shows. Uh, I think we'd all go TV shows. So I think that well, maybe Tyler. Tyler, would you choose music I'd or TV shows? Music. I, I would still choose music. That's and when what, when I think music, I'm not thinking scores. Yeah. I'm thinking like you know, listening to top forty on the radio or what you know what I mean. Uh, no, stuff it's like all that. music because I if if it was just the radio. Well, Graham, I know like, you're top forty all the time. Yeah, <laughs> don't even yeah, go Nickel, there. Nickelback, Celine Dion, and yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, Metallica. <laughs> no, um, if it was just like music, like like you know the stuff you play on your iPod or well, no one has iPods anymore, but you know on your phone, Spotify, mm-hmm. whatever. Zooms, or, man. My Zoom. <laughs> you know, on the radio, then sure, but yeah, the you would lose it all from video games and every and m- movies and like mm. most of the movies you think are good would suck without the the music. Can you imagine playing Halo without the music? Like that's just a, an okay game. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure, decent sci-fi Espe- game, no especially exactly. the first one. Oh yeah, but but let me let me throw this in real quick. We're gonna go, you know, we're gonna reveal ourselves as being really lowbrow here, I think, but. What if I threw books into the equation? How many of your answers would change to books? <laughs> nope. Books gone. I knew Graham would. Um, <laughs> I, I, I couldn't books. give up books. <laughs> I, I couldn't do it. I. Yeah, no. Okay. No. I don't think I could either, for that matter. But, yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank God we don't, though. This... Yeah, exactly. But we answered your question, love... so you right. So uh, we have time for, like, one or two more. All right. Let's go Brian's question. Uh, what game in 2019 do you think will be the biggest disappointment? Um, just to continue, like, the hate that's going to be flowing to me this um, this episode after it releases, uh, I think that the Star Wars game is going to be the biggest disappointment. I don't want it to be the biggest disappointment, Tyler. I just think the I Star know. Wars game, if it comes out this year, I don't. I just don't think it's going to be as good as people want it to be. Like they're gonna, it's I'm, gonna be the movies where they hype it up so much, and it's just, or it's gonna mm. be Battlefront again. It's gonna be the same thing. Now Battlefront, maybe not fair because you know, EA made it, but I could see that being a, a huge disappointment. So, like I, I see what you're saying. If that comes true, do you understand how heartbroken I'll be? I do, I know, and I don't. I hope I'm and... like I I really do hope I'm wrong. I hope this game is a ten out of ten game of the year. Like. Mm best game that i didn't you know all of that i just i i have no faith in in the in star wars video games anymore like there hasn't been really a good one since knights of the old republic 2 sure i trust respawn though to make something good and this isn't a shooter thank god it's not a shooter but, but you trust respawn to make a game that's not in their forte like that seems silly i, I don't know i just I I, I think I'm... there's enough good people there to deliver something good. Like they they delivered Titanfall one, which you know it, it's it's absolutely a shooter, right? But it it introduced a lot of other elements into that genre that even like super huge shooters copied, you know, um, like Call of Duty. Looking at you there, and and then um, the second Titanfall was fantastic. The story was amazing. The campaign is one of the best shooter campaigns I've probably ever played. 
you know, like Call of Duty 4 is better, but, you know, the, uh, the, I thought the Titanfall 2 campaign was fantastic, but I have faith in that. Um, to me, like the two that if they were super disappointing would just crush me would be that Star Wars game, um, Jedi Fallen Order or, um, uh, Skull and Bones. Those are the two I'm super hyped for this year. And, uh, you know, I'm really hopeful. Steven, should I share my bold prediction that I told you the other day? Do you remember about uh, yeah, Star Wars, oh, the oh, movie? Oh, no, the movie. Yeah, I yeah. thought you were going to talk about the disappointment as the, you know, dig at me. Um, no, sure, no, sure. no, 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 no. I don't remember your Star Wars prediction, but go ahead. So I think, you know, everybody's so down on the Star Wars series this year. And I think everybody who listens to the show knows that I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And we, by the way, we have a conversation going on like, kind of in chat like star trek versus star wars again and there's no reason those two need to be competing you can like both i like both but i think that star wars episode 9 is going to be just as good as avengers endgame i really do I, i i don't care make it three hours and 20 minutes long i don't care however long it needs to be to finish that story make it that yeah, I hope both movies are four hours, to be honest yep. with you. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Lord of the Rings did it. They did it with The Hobbit, which honestly should have been like one movie. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about squeezing the juice out of an orange. <laughs> yeah. So, and Graham, you love, like, that world, and you're even saying, like, The Hobbit was too much. Like, it, it there's no way. Like, that should have been two movies at most. In the, but, the same way that a lot of Star Wars fans don't count the prequels, a lot of Lord of the Rings fans don't count the Hobbit trilogy. Yeah. Or the prequels, I guess. Technically. Yeah. So, <laughs> by the way, shout out and chat to the Orville. Great show, by the way. If uh, if you haven't seen it, the Orville on Fox is fantastic. If you like Star it, Trek it, type stuff. So, Tyler, are you going to answer today. it? Yeah, I'll answer the question. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, I think, at the risk of sounding like anti-Sony, which I'm not, I think Days Gone is going to be the disappointment of the year. I think that's very fair. I think people are expecting that game to probably be a nine because it's just mm-hmm. Sony. Um, and I think it's a I seven. Just, I, no, I think I, it's, it's an seven, eight. seven, five. I, maybe, maybe, maybe high seven. I, I could see an eight. I just don't foresee this being amazing or good. Yeah. Or great. I mean, great. It'll be good. Heck, yeah. I think a seven's good. But so it I, is I just good. don't. But I just, I think there's a few things at play here. I think people are zombied out to a large extent. I mean, you're even seeing that with, like, Walking Dead ratings at this point. People are just kind of over it. It no longer has that, like, mass appeal. Yeah. I'm Um, just invested. Yeah. But, Graham, like, you love that type of stuff, and you have no interest in playing Days Gone. No. I don't have any interest. But I don't think that's going to be the biggest disappointment. I think... Okay. A lot of people are still going to really enjoy it and like it and be happy with that game. My biggest disappointment, I think, they kind of gets bottled together with Destiny. And that is The Division 2. I think yep. it's going to be basically like The Division 1 when it first launched. Maybe it'll get better later and stuff like that. But I think people are going to get tired of it. It's going to be kind of the same thing over and over. Uh, so I think the Division 2, which I don't want it to be, because I was looking forward to getting it, but now that I thought of it, I think the Division 2 will be the biggest disappointment of this year. Yeah, yeah Graham, I, th- I think that's fair, because remember, so you remember, <laughs> Stephen, remember, <laughs> remember, yeah. he's coming out again. Do you, you remember when the uh, trailers came out for the first Division? Yes, like so long ago. we were all ago. like, this is amazing. Yeah. Like, this is what we've been waiting for forever from video games, right? Remember yes. when they had the thing where you're like, you could just jump in on your tablet, like if you're at work. Yes. And control the drone. And then that got totally wiped out of the game. Yeah, and I, I remember, because I remember reading the, like, there was like a preview in Game Informer back when Game Informer was mm-hmm. like popular. It still um, kind of is, but yeah. Well, yeah, but. I, I don't think it's a bad magazine even still, but no, it's not. Um, I, I remember reading it and then I was talking about it with people like my buddies and, and we were like, yeah, we can't wait to play this game. And then like, it just didn't come, didn't come, didn't come, didn't come. And all of a sudden like it came and it wasn't that good. Now mm-hmm. I will preface 
Graham's statement, because um, I, I was kind of thinking the same thing until I, I remember Star, uh, Star Wars is po- supposedly coming out this year. Mm-hmm. Like, I think we're worried that that Ubisoft's not learning what like they uh, what was wrong with the Division One at the start and not yeah. implementing what they fixed that made it fun in the later like uh, years of that game in the, the same type of way that Bungie kind of forgot. Like what made uh, Destiny one good when when the Taken yeah. King came out, and then just made the same mistakes all over again. So mm-hmm. if Ubisoft can avoid that, then the Division two will be good. But if I they agree. can't, then yeah, the Division two will be a disappointment. So it just so all my, depends. My honorable mention, by the way, and I'm even tempted to switch my answer to this, but I'm gonna hold what I what I said is Anthem. I think there's a really good chance that game could be really disappointing. You and think, I really, I hope it's not. I really hope it isn't. But I, I just, think there's a good chance. I don't think there's enough people saying that this game looks like a ten to be a disappointment. In the same way, like Crackdown, we could put that in the list. But come on, is anyone thinking that game's going to be great? No, no. I, I think fun, those are two maybe. different things. I think there's a lot of hope behind Anthem, and the hope is that it's going to be what Destiny should have been. That's why you I know? don't want to think of it that way because I want yeah. to think of positive and be a great game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking, well, see, with Anthem, it's like I'm curious. I'm not, like, expecting a lot, but it might be fun. And that might. And I'm trying to temper expectations. I think that's smart to do with Anthem because you never know. Some When these companies try to do this, like, new, like, shared world, half Memorpaga, um, but not really, sure. like, shooter, um, they, they mess up a good amount of times. Um, yeah. Look at the Division and, you know, Destiny. So I'm trying to not go in expecting the world and just trying to have fun and i think that's going to help me but i understand that there are people that are probably going to be like oh this is going to be the best it's going to be the best and then it comes out and they're like they stop playing in two weeks but so, like that said steven if if you go into a game knowing that you have to say to yourself if i set my expectations really low i'll probably like it i just say really low i'm just, no, I, I know what you mean, it up. just right. not like, a 10 game. i don't think <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be a 10 that's not what, no i, I don't, don't think either. it's gonna be a four i just think it's gonna be a good game that's like fun yeah. not like amazing like i thought destiny could be or the division could be yeah i i just think there's a chance i i don't know i i trust bioware their a team not their mass effect andromeda team <laughs> to to deliver i hope they do i I, I just think there's a chance that, that we could see that with that game. So, all right. Well, that question went a lot longer yeah, than, that was good, than, we, than we thought. It was a good discussion, though. Twice. So thanks to everybody who sent in questions. Really appreciate that. And, uh, again, if you every time you send in a question, you're entered to win in our monthly giveaway that we do in the last episode of every single month for a gift card to the system of your choice. So, again, thank you for sending those in. Guys, let's wrap up episode 142. And, uh, you know, I think a pretty a pretty good one. A lot of good discussion. We got some predictions out. We talked uh, super giant TVs. And, uh, of course, the Bungie and Activision news. So, guys, if you'd like to join the community, we'd love to have you do that. There's a couple different ways. Go to Facebook, the Gaming Hub forums. Go to Twitch, uh, TXH Gaming Hub there. From either of those places, you can get a link to our Discord, uh, where we have a lot of good conversations going on about a ton of different things. We'd love to have you join in there. If you'd like to help support the show, uh, we'd appreciate that as well. And you can do that by going to Twitch again, TXH Gaming Hub on Twitch. And if your name is on Prime Member, you get a free Twitch Prime sub to use every single month. And if you choose to spend that on us, we'd really appreciate it. If not, spend it on somebody, help them grow and achieve their goals. We also have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash gaming hub. And uh, there's different tiers there to sign up for with different benefits, including at $5 or more being entered into a monthly giveaway just for patrons for $60 in gift cards to the console of your choice. All right, everybody. That's it for episode 142. And we'll be back next week with episode 143. And until then, everybody have a great week. Play some good games. Stay safe. We will talk to you soon. Take care, everyone.